As a homemaker, I think hosting in your home is very important. And I think hosting, even if you live in a small space, can happen. And here are some ways I've learned how to host small gatherings and large gatherings in our 950 square foot. So we've lived here for seven years now and I enjoy hosting. I think it's something that God has called us to do as Christian homemakers to be hospitable with our space and I just truly enjoy having people over to my home. So this house is, like I said, 950 square foot and it has hosted um, a couple guests and it has hosted 25 plus women in this space for a progressive dinner we had a couple years ago. And so it is possible to host a large amount of people in a small space. I am gonna share a few tips here that are not in any particular order. And this is just some things I have thought of and seem to have made work for the space that we have. And probably if you live in an apartment or another small space, you can make these work as well. So here is the first tip. One thing I make sure to have is folding tables and folding chairs. So when we have an actual sit down meal where we have had birthday parties or people over for a meal, we put out a folding table in one of our open spaces and extra folding chairs around that. Some people do have to sit on our couch and chairs um, and in the kitchen table here and on the folding table, but having people in those separate little spaces works just fine and you make it work, like I said, with the space you have, especially when you are hosting in a smaller space. And if you have people who, if you're having like a dessert and coffee and you have folding chairs leaned up against your wall or something like that, if they want a chair, then they can grab it down to sit. Otherwise, you have enough space for standing room and sitting room because some people honestly would prefer to just stand and mingle and walk around to the little different groups of people who are chatting. One thing that works for large groups is to serve buffet, buffet style. This counter has gotten a lot of great use with serving our food because I'll put the hot dishes, sides, and desserts over on that little side, our drinks over by my espresso machine, and just make it work as you go around. And then this table is probably the last space filled because then people can go sit in other spaces. But buffet works so well for that. That way it just has more of a flow to it. If I have smaller groups, just like a couple ladies and their kids, I'll maybe we'll serve it up on the table, but that is more for like a close-knit smaller group. But the buffet works very well for a small, or for a large group. So if you have larger groups coming to your home, set up a table if you have to, to serve that buffet style, just to make the ease of the flow go smoother. And that way you're not taking up table space for putting food out on. Another thing I like to do is to greet people at the door and take their coats, if it's cooler, to a bedroom. So we only have two bedrooms, our girls' room that they share and our master bedroom that our baby also sleeps in. So what I did when we had our progressive dinner a couple years ago is we took the coats and put them in our bedroom on the bed. That way they're not taking up our little entry, they're not strewn about all the furniture and chairs, and so it's just one designated space for the coats. If people want to take their shoes off, you can put them in that area too, or have um, like an extra rug put out that you can have their shoes lined up on against a wall, just so that the space that you are in doesn't get crowded with people's extra things. If you have a lot of kids, say it's your kid's birthday party, and you want to make sure they have a place, the adults have a place, set up a kid's table. So we have a little, um, like, blue play table downstairs in our unfinished basement that we bring up that the little kids can sit at and then we also have a space like the girls' bedroom that they will go play in if the adults want to socialize in the living room or um, a little toy basket that we'll pull out and put them in that little corner to play over there. Not saying they won't come and talk to the parents and interrupt and all that, that's just kids, but having a space for them to be able to sit and eat at and go to play just helps kind of make the space not feel quite so crowded and that way there's designated spots for every person who comes. If it is nice outside, open up your outdoor space. Even if you live in an apartment with a balcony, have people go out there to sit if you have a smaller group. Open up those sliding doors if it's not too buggy, let people go out. Um, if you are 
having a summer barbecue, stay outside. That way you don't even have to worry about your indoor space. We did that not too long ago for like a back to school gathering with some of our Sunday school class actually. And we just stayed outside. We did things out in our yard, we grilled, and it just made it really nice to not have to open up this whole entire space. Once it got later, the kids wanted to play inside, which was fine, but you just make all of your real estate available. That way your small home isn't so crowded with lots and lots of people. So if it's a Christmas party or a fall party or Thanksgiving, keep your decor a little more simple. That way you aren't stressing about you gotta get everything decorated perfectly um, because people, kids, they want space to run and play and move around. And if you have decor all over the place, it's gotta be moved anyways. So less stress on yourself by just keeping it very simple and minimal. People are coming to see you and to probably eat food. So they're not as worried about your decor as you might be. And that's something I had to learn as well. I love decorating for the seasons as many of you know if you watch my channel. But if you keep it more simple and minimal, less cluttered, then you have space for people to come and enjoy and sit and eat or drink coffee with you. If you are worried about the food aspect of it, having enough oven space or space in your own fridge to store the food, do a potluck style. Offer to make the main dish and the dessert and people bring sides. Or when we had our grill out, we did bring your own meat, we would grill it and bring a side to share. So just something like that. That way, if you're worried, like I said, about the fridge space, having enough oven space, you can have people join and contributing to your food. And that way too, like if you were worrying about expenses, well, people will bring something, even if they go buy it at the store that's not homemade, they will gladly bring something to join in the fellowship and community that you are offering. So those are some of my main tips that I have learned along the way in living in a small space. We used to live in a 450 square foot apartment and that was very crowded. We never really had more than six people in there at one time, but we still hosted and we sat at our little island. That's the only eating space we had, but we still enjoyed the fellowship. So I just wanna remind you, no matter the space size that you have, opening up your home to be hospitable as Christian homemakers is valuable and important. Getting together with community, especially now that's coming close to holiday time, just be okay with opening up the space that you have. Even if you didn't get a food made, pull out some crackers from your drawer and give them a bottle of water or something like that, just to have community and fellowship with other people and enjoy their conversations. So don't be afraid to open up your space whatever the size of home you live in. So I hope this is encouraging for you today to just share what you have in your home with other people's, um, as well as sharing in a small home and just opening that up for your friends, your family, and for community. Have a blessed and wonderful day.